I'm Michael Delsignori, a Massachusetts OUI lawyer. In today's video, I want to talk about a case that's been in the news. It's going to be argued next week in the Massachusetts Supreme Court. It's the case of Commonwealth versus Thomas Gierha. And it raises the issue of whether you can use field sobriety tests to determine whether someone's under the influence of marijuana. Now, you've probably heard about field sobriety tests, a so one leg stand, walk, and turn. These tests are routinely used to determine if someone's impaired by alcohol. And this and the case that's going to be argued next week in the Massachusetts Supreme Court addresses whether you can use those tests to also determine if someone's impaired by marijuana. And the judge in the district court said that you couldn't, that there's no studies, there's no scientific correlation between someone under the influence of marijuana and their inability to stand on one leg or walk out nine steps, uh, the court concluded. There was a, uh, various studies presented to the court, and the judge ultimately found that we can't come to any correlation, so this evidence can't be used. So that decision is going to be reviewed by our highest court in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Supreme Court, and they can either overrule the judge or affirm his findings. I think his decision was well-reasoned, and I think the court will affirm his decision, because the problem is, with regard to alcohol, these field sobriety tests were studied years ago to determine that there is some correlation between not being able to balance and stand on one leg and being un under the influence of alcohol. There's never been any study to determine what impact someone, how much a uh, person's ingested in terms of marijuana to determine whether they can, can or cannot do uh, a nine-step walk and turn a one-leg stand. So what happens is if, the, if a jury gets to consider this evidence, it, it unfairly allows the jury to infer that these tests are just as reliable with alcohol as they are with marijuana. So I think the judge was, was correct in saying that these tests can't be used uh, because there's no reliable correlation. Another issue in the case is whether an officer can, can provide opinion evidence that someone's under the influence of marijuana. Whether this is something that's subject of lay opinion. In other words, if someone's drunk, anyone can say, hey, the person is drunk based on, on their experience because everyone, the court has reasoned, is familiar with the signs of intoxication. Someone slurring their speech, having trouble with balance. With regards to marijuana, the district court judge said people aren't familiar with the signs of impairment by marijuana to be able to say that someone's impaired. Uh, so the court also said officers can't render that opinion without having some kind of expert training. So these two issues are going to be before the Massachusetts Supreme Court. I think on both issues the court's going to affirm the judge and, and say that the field tests are not accurate and reliable for marijuana and that, that officers shouldn't be allowed to offer opinion evidence regarding marijuana without some kind of specialized training. Now they don't, now this specialized training that the judge also went into, into this training is whether if they were qualified as a DRE, they could render an opinion. And he didn't uh, reach this issue because so it wasn't relevant to the case, but he said, well, part of the DRE training also relies on the field sobriety tests. So this case could have an impact on how cases of OUI marijuana are prosecuted in Massachusetts. It could limit the evidence that the government um, can use and, and essentially give, give more reliable evidence uh, to the jury deciding these cases. If you have any questions uh, about this issue or you'd like to discuss it, feel free to contact me. My name is Michael Del Signori. I uh, practice OUI defense and handle these cases throughout Massachusetts.